All right, I'm here today with Lauren Pearson. Great to have you in. Great to talk to you today. Uh, Thank you. All right, how's your day going? It's going great. Thank you so much. Well, I just want to start with like, um, just tell me a little bit about what you're doing, about your business, and um, how long you've been doing it. Yeah, so we have, I have two businesses actually. The first is Somerset Advisory, it's a private wealth management practice. We have two offices currently, one in Birmingham, Alabama, and one in Beaufort, South Carolina. And we do full service wealth management for private families and small businesses. Uh, we are adding a third Virginia office sometime in the next year or so. Um, the second business is called The Wealth Edit, which is a membership platform for women to learn to be good with money. So that we see in our private practice after doing this for 15 years, we saw kind of a gaping hole in the market and how um, the financial services industry worked with women. And so we're trying to bridge that gap. Okay. So how long have you been doing uh, both businesses? Like, it seems like the, the women's, I mean, Wealth Edit is the latest thing you've been doing, right? Yeah, we actually started right before COVID hit. So uh, we launched in March of uh, 2020. Okay, okay. So was there any um, <laughs> challenges by starting me right before COVID, like through COVID? Yes. So I'm, I'm over 40 now and I was 40 at the time. And so we really envisioned kind of setting up these micro communities across the Southeast and various cities and launching a lot of in-person events. The other thing in our um, analytics that people really wanted to us to help kind of acknowledge and deal with is travel. So a lot of um, our planned content was around travel. So we basically essentially had to throw our business plan in the trash um, and figure out what we could do in this new environment. So that's when the, the online membership platform really started and our podcast started then too. So that was, for sure a challenge, but you know what's neat about it is that I, I don't think without COVID, we would have naturally thought that way, you know, and so it forced us to step outside of ourselves and outside of our comfort zone, and we've met some really cool people along the way. Oh, that's cool. And you said, you mentioned analytics, uh, so I take it you guys did a lot of research on what uh, your target audience needed or, or, or wanted, right? That's how you came up with that. Yeah, so, so what we do in our private wealth management practice is we actually study groups of people who are naturally inclined to be Somerset clients, Somerset advisory clients. And so our first group of people that we studied were attorneys because we have a lot of attorneys with whom we work. So we figured out how they made money, sort of their best path and most efficient path to wealth accumulation. And so that worked out really well. We did that in 2017. And in 2018, we, um, we basically launched our platform for attorneys. In 2019 is when we started studying women. And so in, in our research there, it was obviously much more broad and much um, wider of a category as women are 52% of the population. So that we took all year, we did round tables, we did in-person discussions, we, you know, built this gigantic knowledge base and, and started the conversation with, hey, we know that it's tacky to talk about money and it's taboo, but, but what then do we do, you know? And so that's, that's how that whole, you know, that's how we launched the Wealth Edit and figured out where the gap was. Okay, okay. Well, have you always wanted to do what you're doing? Have you always wanted to be an entrepreneur or, or did you go down some other paths first? Yeah, no, I did not want to be an entrepreneur. I, um, but I guess in some ways, given my career path, I've always been one. I just don't think I, I don't think I fully um, wore, wore that as part of who I was until I started Somerset Advisory. I've been in wealth management for 15 years. Um, but Somerset actually started, I went out on my own in 2016 and launched Somerset in 2018. So that's when I really fully connected with our entrepreneurial audience and clients, you know, because you really learn the most by being a, a, you know, business owner yourself. Yeah. So what's some of the, what do you think, like, some of the biggest things you learn from, because I take it you were doing, you were selling those same services or, uh, uh, but now is a business owner, what's some things you learn about just that are general principles about business from being a business? Yeah, that's a, 
That's a great question. So I think the number one thing I learned is that um, you n- n- figuring out a niche for yourself is a big deal. I, I think um, not having the scarcity mindset, which is really, it's really scary when you're an entrepreneur because all of a sudden your livelihood is based on this thing that's not even built yet. Um, so it's really easy to just sort of, you know, take on any client that you can just to get some clients in the door. Um, if you can possibly have built a plan financially or built, you know, have the patience to build slowly and carefully over time, that is the very best way. There are a lot of, for whatever industry you're in, there are a lot of clients out there. And for us at Somerset, particularly, it has been so exceptionally helpful to really say, this is who we serve best. We're not trying to serve so many families. You know, we're really happy with where we are. And that doesn't mean that we're not driven and motivated, but we're, our, our, pure drive and motivation is really centered on the clients that we serve right now. So if you have two clients, you should serve those two clients the best that you ever can. So then they will each probably refer you to two more clients, you know, then you'll have six clients. It's just, that's the best way to build a business um, is really through your reputation and word of mouth. So I'd say that first. Um, second is that you have to be willing to adjust to what the market, how the market responds to your business. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, everything that someone suggests you build a whole new business plan, but it does mean, you know, look for similarities among the feedback that you're getting and see if there's something easy and not, uh, time or cost consuming that you could do to just add that element to, to your brand. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, so you say you work with a lot of business owners now, you know, um, in, in the current state of the market, how things are going, what's some of the, what's some of the challenges you think they're having at this, at this time? If they have portfolios, the, the real big challenge that I see with um, entrepreneurs is when something's going wrong when you're in your business, you should definitely change something, right? So it's like, if you're an entrepreneur, then you should definitely change whatever is wrong with your business. Um, The problem is, is that in the public market, so if you're invested in the stock market, you should not try to change that business because there's already someone working on that at that company. And I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, our tendency in market behavior is to control, try to control what we can control when things feel out of control. Um, And and that is absolutely disastrous for a portfolio. It, It is good to be invested in the the right things and it's good to stay invested when it feels uncomfortable um and that's very very difficult for entrepreneurs so i would say that as it relates to what i do specifically um and you know i think a lot of times with especially for let me kind of talk about female business owners there was a study done during the last recession Um, and I'm talking about the great recession, so I don't really count COVID because it was so short, um, although a technical recession. So I would say that in, when they studied female businesses in 07 through 09, that what they found is that female businesses really cut back during that time to save their business. So in other words, they reduced headcount, they reduced products, they reduced everything just to stay afloat, um, when things are down and when your business is having a tough time, hopefully you're well capitalized enough and you have another few errors in your quiver. It's actually the best time to launch new products. Some of the most innovative, com- innovative companies have launched their best products in times that were tough. Um, when they interviewed and surveyed those same female businesses, you know, in 2014, they found that their revenues were still less and their headcount was still, still less. So Our theory at the Wealth Edit, and we have a class about this actually that people can purchase online um, and we can walk them through this idea, but it really is the best time to be risk on when things are down. Um, And it's when you need to be really focused on, you know, how much risk am I actually taking is when things feel very comfortable. It's counterintuitive, but it is um, extremely important for entrepreneurs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I've done some uh, studies on that too. Uh, 
how rich a lot of people get during <laughs> yes <laughs> their new style. Yeah. yeah so tell me something what's what's what inspires you where, where do you get where do you draw inspiration from you know one of the biggest privileges of being a small business owner has been building a team around me um that has been I think it's one of the hardest things I've ever done but also the most rewarding I love our team I think we have some of the strongest people in the business with servants hearts I mean people that really want to help other people it's it's a privilege to watch how other people think and do in business um I wouldn't say that my strength is management I, I'm definitely not a micromanager so someone that needs um a little direction might have a difficult time um with me as a manager because I really let people have you know I cast the vision and I let my employees run with that and I think that that um, has watching people's skill sets grow and really thrive in that environment has been just an honor. Awesome, that's awesome. So, in, in the uh, how do you how do you build how do you recruit uh, great people? And that's another thing that seems like it's it's uh, uh, a lot of need out there as far as staffing and, and just finding great people. So, how have you found great people? we pay very well so i think that that's something that businesses have to adjust to um when everything when they were talking about their great resignation last year you know we had already done that work make sure that you as the business owner are doing salary studies so that you know what's competitive in your marketplace um i remember anecdotally i had an employee that really that really just wasn't a great fit for somerset and another um, business owner who she was interviewing with called me and she said, you cannot pay your people like this, you know, because it was like, I, you know, but I think if you want to retain the strongest talent, you have to figure out a way to pay them what they're worth and what they, what they ask, um, obviously within reason. Uh, and also because it's a small entrepreneurial business, you know, working with people. And if you can't pay them exactly what they're worth from the beginning, kind of, cast a vision for how they can get there fairly quickly. I think that that's really worked. So I'd say pay is number one, because, you know, we're all working. This isn't, this isn't for fun, even though I think what we do is fun. Um, and then I think too, being really clear, there's a book called Traction. Um, and one of my favorite parts of the book is talking about, you know, employees really need to get it, which is their job. They need to want it and they need to have the capacity to do it. Um, so all of those things are important. And I think some people get it and have the capacity to do it, but they don't want it. You know, So you really have to self-evaluate and say, do these employees that I currently have, or when someone's interviewing, do I see them really checking all three of those boxes? Um, to me, that's been helpful. That's awesome, that's awesome. So. What's the best advice that you would give yourself or an 18 year old, uh, either you at 18 or someone else with the same mindset that you had at 18? What's the best advice that you would give them? I wish I would have been more gracious on myself as I was raising my little kids. You know, I think as a as a as a woman, um, you feel a lot of pressure to perform and behave like men who have potentially a stay at home spouse. Um, and, and it's I, what COVID taught me is that I could have spent a little bit more time at home and done the same amount of work, if not better work. Um, but I really just didn't, I didn't give myself that grace. And so that, that was, um, that was a good wake up call. So I think if I was telling an 18 year old, it doesn't mean you're working less or working less hard, um, it just means I, you know, and then there's times in my business where I really pushed um, when maybe I should have taken time to lift up. A lot of times when you're the owner of a business and you're feeling a stress or a pain point, you wanna dig in further. Um, and, and sometimes what you need to do as the business owner is to lift out of that situation. Um, everything is a season. So we've had some really wonderful seasons and some really hard seasons. And so I think just being gracious with yourself and realizing that it is actually a season. And when you look back a year from now, it's going to look really different. Hey, that's awesome. Well, tell me, how can people 
Um, well, first of all, what's your target audience? I mean, your target customer, I'm sorry. Like, what's your yeah. So with the Wealth Edit, we've created a membership that really should be approachable to anyone. It's a approachable price point. So it's $400 a year, which I often say is what a lot of people spend on coffee and um, a lot of people spend on, you know, a dress or a suit or whatever it might be. So maybe giving yourself that gift of content and community um, just to get to give yourself the first um, the first gift of being good with money, which you may already be, but just it, you know, adding those arrows to your quiver can be really helpful. Um, and then with Somerset Advisory, we really, if you are a, um, a small business owner or you're a family that just really has the desire to build a wealth accumulation plan, um, we always like to be people's first call. We always take those calls. And even if we don't end up being the right fit, we have such a wonderful um, community of colleagues from across the country that we can refer out to if it ends up that Somerset isn't the fit. And there's no need to be embarrassed about that. Um, I often say, I'm not sure I'm a Somerset client yet, but it, you know, I'm getting there. And I think that it, that being that, that first call, you know, you can trust that, that will lead you in a, in a direction where you would get fiduciary financial advice, which is putting your interests ahead of my interests, which the industry standard is not that, um, but it's important that you do sit with a fiduciary advisor. And that's great. Tell us, tell the people how to get in contact with you. Like what's, how can they reach you? How can they, um, What's your, I don't know, uh, online <laughs> address? Present. Or yeah. So we're on, um, we're on Instagram and, and TikTok um, as Wealth Edit. And then we have a, well, a website, www.wealthedit.com. We have a fun quiz that you take um, when you get there. That's for, uh, for all women. And, you know, we've had men, we have a guidebook. People, have, men have ordered that guidebook. So I think even though the program's set up and built for women, you know, I think men can enjoy that too. And then for Somerset Advisory, it's just somersetadvisory.com. Um, there's a place on there to request and schedule a meeting. And, um, and you can read about our team and, and what we believe in and all those things. That's awesome. Well, Laura, it was great talking to you. I learned a lot. <laughs> oh, good. William, I know. I'm so glad that we did this. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have a great day. Thank um, you. I'll talk to you soon.